Um, good afternoon. Um, my wife says to me, I'm a rugby widow. Um, maybe she is. Um, I've slept with this trophy probably, <laughs> I reckon, about a dozen nights since the 7th of May. Um, and I'm here to kind of talk about um, our story. Um, and it's been a memorable story. Um, it's been a story that um, has not just started this year, but transitioned last year when I took over the role as uh, director of rugby. And uh, I just wanted to, to start by putting some context into how, how we've done this. I think I might put this down for a minute. Um, don't go anywhere. Um, four years ago, we were on, um, we were, um, on the back end of two successive relegations to um, the eighth tier of English rugby. Um, and it's taken a lot of hard work to get back to where we want to be. Um, and this year has just been a phenomenal year um, in the 85-year history of Thomas Giles Rugby Club. Um, sadly, last year, we also um, lost... Um, I lost a friend, a fellow coach of the rugby club in tragic circumstances. Um, and that kind of made me realise that this year, um, what we've achieved is in memory of somebody that was actually quite close to a number of people in the rugby club. So we started our journey, and I just wanted to share with you just uh, a few things of of what we've done. Um, so some of you might be aware, we are the London South East 2 uh, champions. We're now going up to London 1, 1 beneath the National Leagues. Um, we won it by uh, winning every game. So we won 21 games in the league season. Um, we did it by... Uh, thank you. Um, we beat at poor old Ashford 104-0, and I'll come on to a story about that a little bit later. They weren't blind. Um, we are the London South East Regional Intermediate Cup Champions for 2000-2016 um, and that accumulated in winning this uh, wonderful trophy here, the, the National RFU Intermediate Cup um, for this year. Um, so, um, hands up anyone at Twickenham? Anyone go? Hey, happy days. Um, we were backed by 9,000 people from the town. Um, it's the biggest... Um, it's the biggest attendance from any, any club outside the National League's uh, final at Twickenham. Um, it even beats some of the Premiership sides that have taken their clubs to Twickenham in the last four or five years. So it's something we're immensely proud of. Um, and one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is what do we do? Um, so we've all got full-time jobs. I work in the city. Um, every one of my coaching team and players have full-time jobs and we're an amateur rugby club. Um, as we progress through the leagues, that could change, um, but we've done it through, through the following things. So, what do we do? First thing, we change infrastructure. So, I won't bore you to tears, I've got some videos to show you. So, I'll go through the things that we did. The infrastructure was, um, this year, we, we revamped absolutely everything. Um, and you'll kind of pick up on my language. Um, everything is what we did. Um, so you'll hear as I go through and talk about it, it's what we did as a club. There's no I in team, there's no I in any individuality apart from some of the players' performance on the pitch in this club. So we changed the infrastructure. And the infrastructure went from our medical provision, it went from how we trained, it, it went from how we spoke to the players, everything transitioned as a club. If we wanted to take this club to the next level, we had to change infrastructure. The second thing, we had to look at our coaching philosophy. Um, we got the youngest coaching set up in, in Kent, and I've been told it's probably one of the youngest in the country. Um, all of us are under, well, our head coach kind of takes up a peg because he's 38, um, but the rest of us are 35 or beneath. Um, so um, we're the youngest coaching um, set up in Kent, and one of the things we wanted to do, we wanted to play a fast brand of rugby. So we changed the philosophy of how we've been playing over the last few seasons, and we implemented that early on in our, in our season. Um, we laid the foundations early. Um, one of the critical things to the success of what we achieved was putting those foundations down early. People knew what we wanted to achieve early. From the players, to the members, to the vice presidents, to the chairman, we set our stall out early. This is what we want to go on and achieve. We got the player buy-in. Um, we've never held, held a player meeting before. At the start of the season, we held one. We set our stall out. We let the players know what it is we were then going to do. One of the main responsibilities in my role is to set the environment. So um, people often say, am I responsible for motivating the players to do what they do on the pitch? No. I'm there to create the environment to motivate them within. And that's down to the other coaches as well. 
to kind of set the environment to make sure that those players can get out there, go and train and go and put on the best performance that they, that they can. Ambitions. The start of the season, that trophy wasn't in our mindset. We didn't, I, didn't even, I didn't even think about the Intermediate Cup. Our ambition was to get promotion. Communication. Um, there's, a, there's a guy that, that I love called Albert Rabian. He's a human professor of, uh, he's a professor of human communication. Um, so it's all about the three Vs. So we knew if we got the communication right with our players, we would be successful. Everything is done face to face. Any message and any key messages we had to give to our players. The most difficult job, we had a squad of 24 going to Twickenham. We had to get it down to 22. We had to deliver two very difficult messages to two guys. And that was probably one of the hardest things that we had to do. But we did it, obviously did it face to face. What made us successful? Um, we're passionate. I'm passionate about everything we do as a club. Um, we achieved it through sheer determination, through desire. But I believe if you don't have the passion, don't do it. Um, we all had full-time jobs, and we said that to the players. If you haven't got the passion to, to do this, we want 100% passion in you. And that passion is playing for, that, for this rugby club. The second thing is determination. Um, rugby's a hard, hard game. But we knew this year, determination was in defence. We knew we could play. We knew we could attack. We knew we had the attack and finesse to, to go on and, and do what we wanted to do. But the determination in defence... And it's a desire to defend in a game of rugby. And you'll see a couple of clips later of how we actually did that. Commitment. As I said, we're all full-time. Um, we're an amateur club. Okay? We had to spend hours and hours and hours. And the commitment that we put into this is untold. Dedication. Um, all these things um, come out. Hard work, inspiration, uh, loyalty, sacrifices. Sacrifices was the biggest thing. In order... We went down to Portsmouth, and anyone here from Portsmouth before I go to town on them? <laughs> Portsmouth, what a lovely place. Um, it was sleeting, it was hail, it was wind, it was an absolute nightmare. The biggest lump of four words you, I've, I've ever seen, I've ever seen, okay? Um, the boys put their, their, their bodies on the line, okay? And one thing I want to I highlight here is loyalty. They were loyal to themselves on that day and they stayed, stayed loyal to each other. And we got absolutely battered, but we won 13-5. And that's because our kicker put over 90% of his kicks. And we came home from that win, in, it was in the Intermediate Cup, the first round. And I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen the clubhouse like it, because they knew we could be onto something special. Portsmouth were a fancy side, and um, we drank their clubhouse dry that night. Um, the last one is preparation. Every single game, we had the same preparation. And that was, when we come on to Twickenham, we'll talk about it. Preparation was absolutely key. The five Ps. Everyone aware of the five Ps? Prior preparation, friends, there's another one, there's another P in there. Poor performance. So we had the five Ps in our mind every single training session, every single game. And we reminded our players of it. If they didn't prepare, we knew they didn't prepare. Prepare. And we had dropped people because they hadn't prepared officially for, it, for a game. And they knew why. Um, so this is probably one of the reasons why we're successful. Um, the last one's belief. We had to believe in ourselves. We took risks. The club took a kind of a risk, probably putting me as director of rugby. Um, but we had a young coaching structure. We had to have the belief to go on and understand that the experience we had in the game was good enough to get this side promoted. But we had to do it through sheer hard work. So the... the the belief we had in each other, and I'll come on to that, or second to none. Um, a couple of things, just a step aside. A um, couple of um, first picture to typify our season. Um, there's a bit of a, well, I call him a bit of a donkey. He's our second row. Uh, Christian Nell is a model. You wouldn't know it. Um, you've got Christian Nell and Hayden Pengelly. This is in a game where um, we were 97 nil up against Ashford. Last home game of the season. Um, 97 nil. we've never scored over um, three figures in a competitive game in the 85-year history. So um, they have three minutes of added time. You've got these two donkeys saying, kick it through, kick it through, kick it through. We have 30 seconds on the clock. The ball gets kicked through, and you've got these two, like Usain Bolt, going man for man, man for man, man for man, over that try line to get a hand on the ball first. 
But that just typified everything that this side was about. They had a desire to just get to everything first. And we still don't know who actually got that try, because they're both claiming it. Um, <laughs> both donkeys. Um, this game, talk about risks. Uh, Nick Doherty, the guy in the contacts, um, given off to our scrum half, Chaz Spence. Um, I think the words that are coming out of my mouth was F in this and F in that. Don't you F in dare do that. There's a famous player called Sonny Bill Williams, and he just had a flick out of the back. Just flicks, his, flicks, his, flicks the ball out. And this was a sublime moment in our regional final of the Intermediate Cup against, um, against Seven Oaks. And it was a, a defining moment that Chaz Spence went over and scored the try that secured the game for us. But we took calculated risks. Nick was the worst one for it. But we knew we did it in the right place at the right time. And that was against Seven Oaks. Um, this picture was taken from, from our, our game with them. But just to set the scene, I went down on a Tuesday night um, to Matson to watch the game against Cheltenham. Tuesday night, three hours down, um, wanted to see who our opposition was in the, in the national semi-final. Went down there, stuck out like a sore thumb. Um, I, can't, I can't tell you um, that we got, we, we got sort out straight away who, where we were, where we were from. So it ended up me getting back into the car, getting the car, driving around the back of the clubhouse, parking it by the corner flag and filming through the windscreen. And this picture just typifies what Charlie Hardy did on the game back over, up at St. Mark's in front of about 1,500 people. We knew their vulnerability was through in the middle. Now, Charlie didn't score off this, off this try, but the two players with their faces going to go smack bang in the mud were vulnerable. And we then had the vulnerability in that side. If we hadn't gone down to see them, we wouldn't have seen where their vulnerability was. This is a lovely picture. Um, for those of you who are at Twickenham, this is uh, Nick going over for our first try. And again, we talk about desire, determination, um, everything about risk. We took a risk with this scrum. We could have gone for the three points, get the first three points, nine minutes on the board. Lovely, jubbly, first blood to Tumbridge Wells. But no, we went for the scrum. Much against my wishes. Uh, we went for the scrum. Nick at the back. The defining moment, you see the, the, the animation, the pictures on the, on the guys' faces. As soon as that ball touched it down, it was a massive psychological advantage. Um, just very quickly, I just want to talk about understanding. Um, it's not just down to me. The, and the reason I want to just quickly talk about this is, as a coaching team, it was like a family. Um, yes, we argued. Who wouldn't when you see each other probably every single night of the week? Um, but it was that understanding. And for those of you that have read a book by Stephen Covey, it's, the, it's a lovely quote. It's um, through the Seven Habits book. And he will always say, seek to understand before being seek to be understood. And we spoke about this. And the brilliant thing that we had an understanding as a group is we asked each other questions. We didn't call each other out. We asked each other's questions. And we challenged that way. We then put that into the group of players. So we always sought to understand what our players were doing before we kind of imparted what we wanted to get from them. And it was one big happy family, I must admit, after Twickenham it was. I think we all slept together. <laughs> um, Twickenham, um, what an experience. Uh, I, can, I can tell you now that one thing that as soon as we, we got there after the Matson game, we did not want to go there and lose. Um, and one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to do things exactly how we had done them every other game. Um, and one thing Jason Bourne, the, the Tom Wells football manager, phoned me up and said, Alex, don't let the occasion overtake you. And that's the one thing from the outset we said, we're going there to win. My closing thoughts, um, we're very proud, we're very humbled um, by the whole experience. Um, one thing for me is, is um, we did it personally in memory of somebody and I think it, it stuck quite raw with me that I personally lost a friend and a coach that I relied on and it's funny how when you do things for somebody else that it just drives you onto, some, onto a new level um, and it was just something that is a very humbling experience for everyone a part of the rugby club. Um, resilience, um, what do we do to kind of... It was resilience. We were up against it in a number of games. Did we deserve to win every single game? We won 21 league games, seven, seven cup games, one Kent Cup game, plus two friendlies. 31 games we won. We're undefeated for 412 days. 
Was that through sheer, sheer attacking? No, it wasn't. It's through re resilience in the defence. Bodies on the line. Bodies on the line all the time. Resilience in everything. And that's a word we've said before every single game. Resilient, resilient, resilient. You can score as many tries as you can, but if you can't keep them out, you don't deserve to win a game of rugby. And it's that resilience that, that really came through. Our understanding um, with our players. Um, hopefully, if you ever meet any of the players, they say we got it right. I think we did. Um, we respected everything we did, from the players to the coaches. If we wanted something doing, we'd explain it, we'd expect it to be done. But if they wanted to do something, we'd also respect that. And I think it's a mutual part that we had. We had a very special bond as a group of players, a group of coaches, um, and we all got ultimate buy into what we want to do. But it was the respect of each other that really drove home what we achieved. Mental toughness. Um, the mental toughness for me was when we went down to Deal. Anyone from Deal? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. It's a lovely seaside town, but playing at Deal is like playing on a postage stamp. All right? So you can kick probably from your try line and get a conversion. It's like playing on a, on a, on a postage stamp. The mental toughness down there was absolutely immense. Um, we had a real party afterwards on the bus home. If you ever do it, if you ever seen this, you, I would never, never do this. But when you've got props naked skydiving on the coach home, you know you've had a good result down there. Um, but the mental toughness down there, up front, was immense. We got battered, absolutely battered. But we came away with a four-point win in the sunshine. Going down there in January, February, would we have done the same? Probably not. So we got them at the right time. Um, we, not I. Everything we did was we, 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 we. If anyone in the change room said I, we... And that was, that was the mindset. We set a mindset into the players. We were together on everything. So one thing, my closing thoughts, it's all about, it's all about we, not I. Big thing we did this year was set standards. Standards in everything we did. Everything from, from, um, from the water bottles through to when we set the training pitch up to when we, when we had a meet time, our dress, everything. We set standards. And the standards that the players expected of us was exactly the same. And hopefully next year we can go on to bigger and better challenges. So come and support your local rugby club. Thank you.